between what's counted as free care and what's counted as bad debt might have some uh, some challenges with the math um, in how people um, uh, how different hospitals calculate the value of free care and bad debt. So um, I, I wanted to ask um, when a claim becomes recognized as free care. I think that the math is, uh, you know, amount generally billed or or uh, an average commercial rate. Do I, do I have that right? So if you are looking at our 990, that would be a correct statement. If you're looking at internal financial statements, it's a bit different. It's the full charge. It's the full charge for uh, financial statements. Um, okay, that's interesting. Um, a, a similar question, how is, um, is bad debt valued? How does a claim become recognized in, in bad debt? Uh, so there, there is a, uh, a waiting process. There's a 120-day window uh, where we will try to engage with our patients uh, to uh, not, not ask for full payment, but to at least get to uh, an agreement of a payment plan. Um, if after the 120 days we're unable to, to make that uh, 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 reach to, to the patient, then we will uh, begin to move through uh, a, a bad debt process, which uh, then does provide additional notification. Right, I'm sorry, my question maybe wasn't clear. I'm saying after you've moved through that whole process and the claim, you know, you, you delivered some care and the person isn't paying for whatever reason, we don't know, and it's being counted as bad debt, how does it get valued? It, you know, is it an amount generally billed or is it the charges or is it, Amount that it's you're charged. expecting to collect. It's, it's it's charges. It's charges. Okay. Um, are there any scenarios where um, an individual claim can get counted in multiple categories? Only give, for instance, you know that you know you have a, a commercial payer who pays part of charges, and um, so there's an amount between what was contracted with the payer and charges. Would, would it be reasonable to count part of that claim as bad debt? Uh, so that's where I, I think you're referring to uh, likely or possibly high deductible plans uh, where there is an adjudication process of payment processing um, uh, with the insurer. Um, the residual value would then be transferred to self-pay. Um, and that self-pay balance we would look to collect from the individual patient. At that point, uh, the value is is the deductible um, or the copay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense in that scenario. I'm sort of, I think I was asking in a different scenario where sort of the difference between the commercial, the agreed, uh, the negotiated payment and charges could be counted. I've, I've heard stories of hospitals counting that difference as bad debt. And I was asking whether you could envision that or whether that's a practice that Rutland would use. Uh, and so I, th that's getting into pricing transparency um, and, okay. and our our commitment uh, to follow those uh, rules and regulations with pricing transparency, where we do use uh, the metric um, um, generally, uh, payments generally accepted. Okay. Do you know if I, I also have been hearing that there's some um, changes in the you know accounting standards update that is going to require hospitals or maybe already does require hospitals to count bad debt as um, uh, uh, more akin to to what you expect to collect. Um, yeah, are you aware of anything? To, yeah, so that's the revenue recognition standard that generally accepted accounting principles uh, has adopted. Um, that that took months to implement here. Um, probably not great for a, a dialogue here, but would certainly um, uh, entertain a conversation with you if that would be helpful. Yeah, I think that's the right answer. That's the that's the right next step. I I am interested in sort of what's next. Uh, or how has things changed recently and what's next in terms of how these things are calculated. And um, I would be, uh, thank you for this dialogue here. I wanted to have some of it here and I would welcome an opportunity to, 
to do follow up later. Thank you. It, just to dovetail on that, you know, I think making sure we're as congruent as possible and clear about definitions in our own financial uh, data collection, that, that's what the board's all about. We want to get that uh, cleaned up and <laughs> uh, predictable. So well taken. Um, all right. So um, I know we have a hard stop at three, and I just want to make sure that the board feels like we're using our time to the best of what we want to do. So I don't know if you want me to go through these cost exhibits or if you wanted to have any other conversation before we do that. Are you asking the board, Sarah? Yep, yep. Is there anything else you wanted to tackle before we uh, go through these tools? I just want to make sure we have time. OK, I'm, All right. I'm OK with proceeding. OK. Great. Um, so uh, again, curious person, data is and information can sometimes be harder to get to as we discussed earlier. So from the uh, relative standing of Rutland on the cost reports, we see that uh, you are pretty large for a mid-sized rural hospital uh, between the 75th and uh, over the 75th percentile, but uh, you know not quite an outlier. Um, and one thing that uh, I think is always important to note is that um, you know this is not the hugest hospital in the world, but in terms of the relationship between the hospital and the ED, your, your ED is pretty big compared to your hospital, compared to um, what we might typically see. So I think that's something to also keep in mind. <laughs> uh, so you and CVMC have very similar acuity ratings. It's hard to get you at 1.46. Um, are just kind of wondering if you also are feeling that the coding intensity might be not as accurate as you like uh, from your experience. <laughs> No, I, I think um, I would say our coding teams do a really good job. Uh, we actually have audits uh, and uh, their work is reviewed on an annual basis. OK, cool. All right. That's helpful. Uh, and again, you uh, and uh, CBMC are uh, very close at around 20 percent of uh, that ratio. Again, that would be line five salaries compared to the full uh, gamut of clinical salaries. I have a feeling that your corporate structure might be distorting this indicator. I wonder if you have anything to say about that. So this is 2022 data. Um, it, it's already old um, and uh, the the cost reduction uh, that we put in play uh, for this spring uh, certainly will be impactful there. Um, I would also, just based on your previous comment, Sarah, um, that this is one look at administrative costs. If you look at our, our financial statements, you're going to get all together another look. And so really understanding the source of data is really important. We did put that in our narrative to try to highlight that as a concern as we move forward. Um, having said that, our corporate structure uh, we have all services uh, within uh, the hospital. Uh, I think we have one FTE that we float out to our parent company. Um, but other than that, uh, all services and all uh, FTEs are, are reported within uh, the hospital structure. Yeah. OK, thank you. Very helpful. Um, so fiscal year 22 is not very representative in terms of uh, current position in any means. So. Uh, don't know if you want to say anything about the cash available for operations indicator. Yes, so uh, it, talking about our corporate structure, I will tell you that uh, early in the year from a cash perspective, uh, it was it was really difficult. Uh, we actually transferred cash from our parent into the hospital uh, so that we didn't have to immediately realize any losses within our investments. And so that's a little different for us. In fact, that was a uh, Probably important to share with you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and then really tough to see that operating result. Uh, 22 was just uh, really, really hard to hear. And I think some hospitals hit harder than others, uh, but that stands out. Um, and then here, this, so again, this is per Medicare discharge uh, adjusted by the Medicare CMI. Um, so seeing you're at the kind of top end of that whisker, so uh, about one and a half times above the 70. But anyway, what, what, do you, what do you want to say? <laughs> uh, so that was a driving force behind our cost reduction plan this spring. Um, we have uh, 
numerous benchmarks that we look at um, and knew that we had an opportunity that we needed to begin uh, to, to move forward with. Okay. Um, I, I just appreciate your, your directness and candor. I, just, <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, as far as cost coverage goes, um, I'm gonna go to the right section this time and I'll see Rutland here. So uh, in terms of a cost standpoint, uh, you know, pretty close to peer hospitals, uh, a little bit higher, and uh, seeing that cost coverage is uh, very similar to Brattleboro's uh, among the commercial population, uh, but a higher average payment. So it assumes that you're probably doing more intensive services. Um, and then I see that the inpatient kind of commercial, um, you know, Medicare allowable cost coverage has been pretty flat and just barely covering costs. Uh, whereas we again see kind of the deterioration for Medicare and kind of a slow downward slope on both uh, sectors for Medicaid. So just curious, especially with the Medicare Advantage penetration, how you're kind of tackling some of these case mix challenges. Sure. So uh, Medicare Advantage, just to speak a moment on that, um, we've had about a 25% increase in that utilization. Medicare Advantage is about 16% of our total revenue. Um, however, our denials uh, for the organization, Medicare Advantage drives 40% of our denials. Um, and so that's just an, a, an important piece to note uh, uh, in, in this commentary. Um, in terms of um, costs, again, I we'll see these change just a bit uh, as we I think about the cost reduction. Um, and there's, a, there's an awful lot to say within cost coverage and, and with commercials, and I have highlighted that in some of our testimony, um, but probably um, I, I, I consider that to be some privileged information that I'd uh, like the opportunity to talk with the board if, if uh, you so desire to drill down on that any further. Understood. Um, I was just validating. You can see uh, both the cost and reimbursement for commercial in 2017 and uh, how far that's really come down. Um, uh, not just for yourselves, but uh, I just think that's always important <laughs> to keep in mind. Um, and last but certainly not least uh, is a uh, RAND data. Uh, you uh, show up uh, in the exact same spot in both distributions. So uh just uh probably whatever is halfway between 50 percent and 75 percent uh half of that uh is where you are uh on both uh distributions so kind of in the middle 50 percent of the data so not really uh stand out in that way so uh i think that was all i had to cover on that those exhibits i don't know if there are any questions uh comments from board members or the advocates sounds like there might be some other conversation that we might have uh, in a, an executive session, but uh, leave that up to you all. This is <clears throat> this is Tom Walsh. I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the the hard work that you did um, based upon the cost data, and you've mentioned several times that um, in the face of data that showed. Um, higher administration expenses per discharge. Um, you've taken aggressive action and managed to stay within guidance. I think that's uh, to be commended. So I, I just wanted to be sure to say that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sarah, I have nothing else. I share Tom's feelings. Well done. Um, strong submission and thank you for making the hard decisions you needed to make for your community. Any other board or uh, advocate questions for Rutland at this time? Are we going to go into executive session or are you trying to get all of the public in questions out first, Director Lindbergh? I don't know if the board has interest in uh, pursuing any of those questions. So I think that's uh, up to you all. Um, and I also think it uh, would be fine to do a public comment before we entertain that. So uh, if any members of the public have a comment, uh, why don't you use the raise your hand function? A 
sometimes Midwestern questions that aren't translated. So it just looks like no public comment. So <laughs> does the board have interest in any further inquiry in an executive session? We're gonna let them off the hook, huh? Yeah, uh, I think that's a testament to a, a straightforward, complete submission within guidance. So we genuinely appreciate the hard work you're doing and uh, thank you for your time. Hope you enjoy a little free time back, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, we appreciate you. your time today. Well done. Oh, I'm sorry. Any oh, any closing comment before we uh, send you on your way? I mean, <laughs> should at least I, offer you the chance. Yeah, I, I guess I would just offer that um, it's it's really important. We want you to know our operating margin has been really thoughtful. Um, it is. We're not trying to get three percent, or it, it really was derived out of needs for this organization, both within. Um, just liquidity and uh, debt repayment, as well as capital needs. We have some pent up demands for capital. Um, if you look at our four year plan, that is associated again, data matters, it's really important. And we have an aging plant. Um, and so we're really uh, positioning ourselves to address some of those needs for our community. Some of those needs are linked to safety issues. Some of them are linked to increasing access uh, based on some of those wait times. So I just really want you to understand that uh, we were really thoughtful in that approach. Um, and uh, that honestly is what drove uh, a lot of the work in the budget. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, I think we're good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. You as well. <laughs> um, so, Sarah, I think uh, are you all set? We're all set. Yeah, we'll uh, be back uh, the Wednesday's a state holiday, so we won't see y'all till Friday. And